There's a couple things that I kind of actually wished when I was coming up as a self-taught dev knew more of when I was actually like learning and when I was new to the space that I really want to let you guys in on because I think it's very, very overlooked and it's something that we don't do enough of. And I feel like we need to be doing way more of it because it's actually the most simple answer to all of our problems. And yet we still neglect it and don't do enough of it. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the one thing I think, and I'm sure most other people will say is the number one thing you should be doing more of as a developer, especially if you are self-taught, because this is gonna be one of the main things that solidifies all of the knowledge and all of the skills that you build on your journey, especially as a developer, because this one thing, basically the key component as to what gets you a job, what helps you improve, and what helps really, really retain a lot of the knowledge that you get from the courses, the tutorials, the videos, the articles, anything, the books, whatever you use to learn code, this is the one thing you should be doing more of in order for you to really, really understand what it is you're reading or watching. Go on. Also, by the way, do we like the new set here? I kind of like this, you know? If you weren't here on the last live stream, you wouldn't know, but I was talking about this desk right here. This isn't sponsored in any way. I bought this little cheap foldable desk off of Amazon so I can have a set like this. I don't have to fiddle around and kind of finagle my camera around. This makes it look a little bit more professional and it looks pretty freaking cool. I wish I could show you guys the whole set, but this is what it's gonna look like from now on. Hopefully you guys like this. I do enjoy this so, so much, but let's get into the topic of what we were talking about today. So the one thing I feel like everybody should be doing, self-taught, or if you're a college grad, doesn't matter. The one thing that you should be doing more of is building projects. That's it. Really? Yes, really. Really, really? Yes, yes, really, really. Building projects. And when I say that's it, it doesn't mean that's going to be easy. The answer, like I said, is very, very simple. Building more projects helps you solidify some of the knowledge that you gain from all these courses and tutorials and books and whatever it is, like I said right before this. Following courses and tutorials and doing the code along projects is great. You get practical experience, you're actually coding, you're making these projects that people have made, but they're not your own. They're not your own idea. You're following along. You're watching someone else code it and then you're coding it as well. So yes, you're following along on these projects. You know, your course may have code along projects where you are following along with this instructor. You're coding along with them and line by line, you are just copying what they're writing, which is great. You get practical experience. You're writing down code. You're seeing it in action. You're watching a project unfold right in your IDE and browser. So it's a great experience. But the problem with that is that project is not your own. You didn't come up with the solutions to a problem. You didn't design or think out how that nav bar was gonna look or how the hero slash CTA section was gonna look. That instructor did that for you. He coded it for you and you watched him or her and followed along. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. That's how I learned and that's one of the best ways when you're coming up in order to kind of get your hands dirty and start to actually code something. But the problem is exactly that, you're only following along. And with that comes a popular term that we have in Twitter and IG dev is tutorial hell or tutorial purgatory. Face it, I'm going to hell. People get stuck in tutorial hell so, so much where you're buying consistent courses, you're buying all these books, you're buying more resources, you're reading so many articles, you're not sticking to just one and you're overwhelming yourself and you're never really building anything substantial for yourself. You're not you know, taking responsibility for your own projects. You're coding other people's projects and you're putting them on your portfolio, nothing wrong with that. But are you really learning anything is the question. So with all those courses, you just follow along, follow along because why? It's comfortable. It's very, very comfortable to be coding someone else project because the work's done for you. You just write line by line, code by code, like exactly what each snippet looks like, exactly what com each component looks like. But are you really understanding what that component does? Are you really understanding what that code does? Why we're importing certain packages or modules? What the exact logic of that component is achieving for us, especially in something like React where there's just, it, the code base can get super overwhelming in some of those projects. I remember working through a course with Steven Greider where we were working with React and Redux and I was just getting so overwhelmed because because of the Redux, 
the the code base just got so complicated and so crazy that I was just like, okay, I need to go back into this tutorial, literally just take back steps and rewatch some of these videos because I'm not understanding any of this code base. I followed along, the project worked, and the website was working just the way it was in the videos, but I wasn't understanding what the code was doing. So I had to rewatch it and then have him explain it one more time, one more time, until finally I kind of understood what the logic was doing, why we had so many switch statements and all these cases, and why Redux has these action creators and things like that. You know, I had to really, really take my time, even though the project was working, to understand why we did things a certain way and how this project was actually working under the hood. It wasn't until I copied this project in a different way. I built it back up from scratch, but did my own thing. So if you guys have ever taken that course, I will link it down below. Steven Grider has a great course on React and Redux where we built a certain app where it was a CRUD app pretty much, which I mean, pretty much every app is essentially. I built it back up using the same technologies, React and Redux but I made it my own and I used a different API and you guys can actually go on my GitHub right now and check it out. It's my NBA stats app built exactly the same way that we did in the course, but Again, I made it my own. I went through the troubles of not using the tutorial and not following Steven's code, not following his video line by line. I did it myself. I wrote my own action creators. I wrote my own logic and I used my own knowledge in order to actually build this thing and make it work. And there were so many headaches. I even streamed it live on Twitch. Okay, Ugh, Jesus, man, this is so difficult. Maybe, you know, at this point, it's probably like six months ago that I was making this thing. So it took me a while, but it actually made me understand even more how to do things with React and Redux, how to connect these things, how to make sure that some of this logic actually worked in a way where, you know, other aspects of the app wasn't being contradicted or being affected negatively. So now that we understand that building projects is the number one thing that you need to be doing in order to actually grow as a developer, let me give you some tips as to how you can go about that in maybe baby steps if you're not comfortable with building your projects yet, but you want to be able to still take courses and follow along, but there are some things you can do within that in order to still grow and build your own projects. Oh, say less. Number one is you're gonna wanna start small. So let's say you're taking a course. Let's say you're taking Steven Grider's course, okay? Or whatever other course you're taking from Udemy or YouTube. There is most likely more than not going to be a follow along coding project. Once you finish that coding project, one thing you can do is add on small little features in the app that you would like to see. And I said this in a previous live stream and I always preach this because this is something that I actually started doing very early on when I was learning how to code and it helped me so much in order to ease myself into building my own practical projects and build building bigger projects from scratch. So let's say you have a website, okay? Website's all done, everything's working, but you wanna add more features to this thing. You wanna make it your own. You can add small things like, you know, practice using the use context hook in order to add a light and dark mode into the app. So you can practice using state, passing it down, not through props, but using context in order to pass state along these components so you don't have to go down the parent-child tree. It's, it's things like that that helped me solidify that knowledge because I actually did something like that in a website. The website was done from the course, but I wanted to add a light and dark mode because who doesn't like light and dark mode? So, you know, I added that little small feature in there and boom, everything worked. It was still a mobile responsive website. The light and dark mode worked. The background and the text colors changed. Everything was great, nothing broke. That's probably gonna be one of the best tips and one of the best things you can do in order to grow as a developer is adding on these small little features to these projects that you code along with and bam, before you know it, you know, you're gonna have multiple features in a in an app that you're able to say, hey, I added these features onto a website and like now I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable in potentially doing another website from scratch while adding on those features. And maybe along the way, you're gonna find better ways to implement those features and maybe even better the features themselves. Tip number two that is going to kind of lead in with tip number one is contribute to open source. Two things are gonna be great out of that. One, you learn how to contribute to, an, to a code base that is already in motion already in production. So you get to practice a little bit of Git and you know, pushing out your commits 
and merging those commits into the main branch. So you get to practice a little bit of that, which is great because you get to learn how to use that so that whenever you go and transition into a actual front end or back end developer role, you understand how to work with code bases in Git and not screw up a merge or not screw up a commit and know actually how to use Git and working in that environment and workflow. Number two, you're doing the exact same thing as tip number one, but you're actually doing this with other developers now on an actual tangible product or product. Project. You know, some open source projects aren't necessarily always apps. Sometimes they're websites and you get to go in there and sometimes depending on the open source project, I've only had an experience with a few, but some of them do have things like Trello boards where you get to see some of the open tickets and you get to go in and say, hey, I would like to tackle this ticket. You go in and you see what the problem is. Let's just say there's a problem on tablet viewports where margins are getting screwed up and maybe the title is moved somewhere else, but they needed to be in a specific spot. You then get to go in and play around with some of the features or play around with some of the problems that they have listed and then now attack that, commit your changes to your branch and then push it out for a review so that you can merge it into the main. I think that's a very, very great way of learning, again, how to use Git and how to use it in a public environment and two, adding in features or fixing bugs that are not your own and, you know, practicing your skills, solidifying your knowledge, like I said, you know, best way to do it is actually using it in an actual project that is in the wild already and public facing so that there's more pressure on you, right? You need to be uncomfortable in order to be uncomfortable. And that's one of the best ways to do it is using it on an actual public open source project. And tip number three, which is a progression on the last two, is now transitioning over into building out your own project. Of course, that's not a tip, but necessarily it's just kind of like the broader picture here, but building out your own projects is going to be the number one way to solidify your knowledge, grow as a developer, and really understand what it is you're using, whether it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or any framework that you decide to use. The main things there when you're building your projects is take it slow. It can be very, very nerve wracking at first, you know, take tackling your own project, whether it be a portfolio website, a client website, or an app idea that you had, doesn't matter. It can be very nerve wracking as it's a very big problem and a very big task to handle potentially and most likely by yourself. I wouldn't get worried about it. Just break it down in chunks, right? You need to break it down in small chunks. And me and Chris Sean actually talked about this on a previous podcast slash video that we did on a new channel that we're starting called Dev Talk. You guys want to check that out. I will link that episode down in the description. And once we have a channel built up, then we will actually start following you guys over there so that you guys can check out some of the content that we're about to make together. That thing's going to be coming out weekly, hopefully. At first, we're going to do once a week, but we'll start to do twice a week as this thing grows. But the one thing I was saying was taking these websites and or other builds for projects that you have one step at a time. So let's say, for example, you're, build, you're building a website. You don't want to tackle the nav bar, the hero CTA, the about me section, uh, the contact me section all at once. You want to break it down into single chunks. You don't want to tackle everything so you don't overwhelm yourself. So focus on it from a top down perspective, right? If you want to tackle a website, let's do the nav bar first. Let's tackle the top. Make sure the nav bar is the way that you like it. Make sure that there's no issues with margin or horizontal scrolling and that it's mobile responsive first. Once you have that, then move down onto the bottom section, whatever it is you want to put there. Usually it's a, you know, an introduction like, hi, my name is Justin Chow. I'm a front end developer. Bam. Make sure that that's all looking good on different viewports, the fonts all right, the lineup and the margin padding, whatever it is, right? The positioning is all the way you want it. Then keep moving down, keep moving down, keep moving down until your main page is done. Then move on to the next page and do the exact same thing, right? Break it down into small chunks. Don't overwhelm yourself and move sequentially and logically in a calm manner where you can now tackle these things in the same way that tip number one and tip number two was putting in small features one at a time. And that's what I'm trying to build on. Take small steps, stay calm and be patient. These websites don't need to be done on a timeline unless you're in a job environment or an enterprise environment where you are dealing with deadlines. If it's your own personal portfolio, take your time. If it's a client website, yes, you might need to speed it up a little bit, but focus on the projects, especially if you're self-taught coming up right now where you can take your time and really, really hone in 
in on some of the skills that you've been learning up until this point. Taking it slow and taking it in small chunks not only teaches you how to be patient and not only helps you really, really focus in on the actual project at hand and making it perform and look really good, it also helps you when you go into and transition into other actual developer roles where that's probably most likely what you're gonna be doing is focusing on a single task. You're not gonna tackle a whole project at once. You're gonna be working with a team and these tasks are gonna be delegated out to each and every single one of you potentially, right? Depending on how the company works and how the team works, but that's most likely how it's going to look and how it's going to work. So practice that. It's good to be in these kinds of situations by yourself, especially. And then once you transition over into that role, everything kind of is a little more seamless since you've already gone through something similar to it. So that is the one thing you should be doing. And those are a couple tips in order to achieve that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to, I actually just started my own discord server, the dev den. If you guys want to check that out, the link will be in the description for an invite. Come check it out. Come hang out, join the community of other developers in the space. And if you guys want to talk there's a bunch of channels in there you know introduce yourselves all that kind of stuff it's a good time whenever i go live usually everyone will be in there and we'll just chat it up sometimes we'll play some viewer games it's always a good time but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed this video hit that like button hit subscribe if you guys enjoyed if you guys have any questions obviously the comment section is wide open for you and i will do my best to kind of reply to you i've been really really bad about it but that's gonna do it for today i'll see you guys in the next one peace